So we're here with uh, Gudrun here at LEAF 2013. So who are you? Um, I'm an Icelander uh, and I was at the uh, lift in Marseille, lift uh, 2012, and uh, spoke there about the reform of the Icelandic constitution and they asked me to come back to Geneva. So how were you involved in, in that process? I was the chairman of a seven-person committee uh, elected by the Parliament of Iceland to, to prepare the revision of the constitution, so, which, was then, excuse me, which was then done by a council that was specially elected by the, by the people of Iceland. So uh, there's been a lot of talk on the internet and uh, mm -hmm. people talking about what's been going on there because something yeah. special is going on in Iceland. Yes, absolutely. Iceland had um, a serious financial breakdown in 2008 and people wanted a thorough cleanup, could you say? And a part of that was to finish the, um, the reform of the constitution that had always been planned from 1944 and had never really been done. So that's what uh, the idea was, to take the constitution from A to Z and amend what needed to be changed and not more than needed to be changed, but whatever people felt really was necessary. And that's not finalized yet, right? It's still in process? It's still in process. It's, um, there was a, a, a bill for the new constitution was prepared by a council of 25 people who were elected by the public of Iceland. And uh, then their idea was presented to the parliament and it's now in the hands of the parliament to decide. And this election in April, so hopefully something will happen soon, right? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. Or if that doesn't, if it isn't finalized, it's not as if the process is then destroyed because a lot of work has been done and it will then be in the hands of the coming parliament to actually complete the task according to the present constitution, like we have to do it. So at your presentation you, you showed some images of a, a day where there was eight hours of thousands of people yeah, in yeah. a huge hall. Yes. And who was organizing this? Well, uh, the committee that I chaired actually organized that. And that was 1,000 uh, randomly chosen people, so it's a good representation of the nation. And it was extremely... Um, minutely organized to make sure that we did not tell the people what to talk about, that they made decisions themselves. And they sat at tables of about um, 10 people together and they decided on which topics they found was, were most important and then they, it was a long procedure, but they voted on each other's ideas and they continued like this throughout the day until they had actually uh, focused on what they agreed at each table was most important. And when you have a thousand people doing that together, quite a lot comes out. And, um, and we presented all that on the internet. And so it's still uh, available on the internet. Did you say that some young people, was it university people that were involved in planning that? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah? Some young people, young entrepreneurs also. Not necessarily university yeah. people, but young people had taken part in preparing a grassroots organization of 1,500 people the year before. And they did it very well. And we decided to ask them to help us this time as well. And they did it exceedingly well. I was very pleased. So is this going to be the most revolutionary, most advanced constitution in any country in the whole world? What's going on there? <laughs> uh, well, uh, obviously it's based on what we had before. It's a constitution for a Nordic welfare state. So it doesn't apply to any country in the world, of course. It, it applies to Iceland. It's made by Icelanders for Iceland. But I dare say that the process of involving the public so, so well is definitely something new and something I hope will will maybe influence other nations in how they go about such important decisions as how to uh, reform their, their basic law, involve the public. It's not supposed to be terribly complex or intricate. It should reflect the basic values that the nation holds at any time. And that can last for long time. Well, yes, but doesn't necessarily need to be hewn in stone because life changes, people's opinions change. We shouldn't be too scared of looking at our constitution and thinking, hmm, this looks a bit old-fashioned, let's change this and that. 
it's it's not a catastrophe it's normal so that's still in process hopefully it's, it's going to yeah. lead to further but i've been looking a little bit at news and people saying hey check out iceland they fixed yeah. the whole banking situation is that true or not What's going on there? Is that separate? Yeah, no, no, no. Well, That's it's a separate issue. I don't think the banking uh, thing had anything directly to do with the constitution. The banking problem was that our banks were privatized and got totally out of control. And our controlling agencies didn't have the manpower or the opportunities actually to do the jobs as was needed. And then, of course, international uh, troubles played a major part, but I, I am of the opinion that we did something very wrong in the, in the years and months leading up to the crash. Um, we're getting out of it, slowly but surely, but there is still a long way to go. We haven't fixed everything, but we're in a better state than we would have dared to hope. Are you in a better state than other countries? Depends on where you look. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, so... When people went to the streets yes. after the crash and all that, they yes. were talking about the banks or they were talking about the constitution or both? Or? They were talking basically about the government and about the officials. They were talking about the people whom we had trusted to lead our nation. And they felt that they hadn't done their job. That was what made them very angry. And they felt that uh, various... Um, measures in the financial uh, system, for instance, how, uh, how loans were secured and the um, interest rates and how it was linked to the, to the value of our currency and so forth, they felt it was unfair and, and should be changed. Um, this crash hit people very hard. Many private persons lost a lot of money and still heavily in debt. And uh, obviously they were not happy with that and they demanded a just solution to that. That was the basic issue. But in demanding that, they wanted a cleanup which included finishing this um, revision of the constitution that had been promised so many decades ago. So you want a cleanup? How big is Iceland? Um, 330,000 people. 330,000 people? It, it, but yeah. we can be hopeful the whole world that uh, you're going to lead the example and kind of like... We hope so. And that other countries might get Maybe. inspired of what happens there? Yeah, hopefully. That, yeah. that, that would be a good thing. All right. Thanks. Looking forward.